Hi, welcome back to Drafting 263 um, 3D CAD with SOLIDWORKS with Blue Mountain Community College. We're going to go ahead and continue on into Chapter 10. And I'm kind of excited about this. We're moving into assembly drawings. And this to me is kind of where SOLIDWORKS starts to shine. You um, Building parts is cool. Being able to put those parts together into assemblies is I think even more cool because this is where we actually start putting pieces together to make things that are made up of more than just one component. So let's take a look at what we're doing. I'm going to give you my screen before I forget. And you can see here I've got open a file that is what we're going to build. And so what we've done, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our center ball joint, and we're going to add some ball joint arms, and then we're going to add a couple of T components. You will need these parts files, and you can find them in eCompanion on the week six tab, the center ball joint, the ball joint arm, and the T joint. So before you get started, Please download those and save them to some place that you can access them as you work through this um, demonstration. So what I want to show you is this. So once we have these things together, you can see we can drag this around. And I don't have it currently set to test collision, so it does all sorts of weird things. But it, it will show you how this thing moves as I drag a part around, a part of it around. Um, clearly it's not perfect, although there are ways to, there are simulation settings that you can utilize to make it more realistic. But it does show you how the movement works. And it can also, it can test fit if we, act, if we activate those settings within SOLIDWORKS. So let's go ahead and put this together. I'm going to start with a new file. So I'm going to click the new. And what we're going to do is we're building an assembly. And what we're doing is called a bottom-up assembly, meaning that we are starting with components and putting them together just like we would if we were building this thing with Legos or with these components physically. So we're going to do a new assembly, and we're going to click OK. And now the first thing we need to do is put in our first component. Now the first component is going to be fixed. It's going to be the one that doesn't move. And it's really a good idea to put this on the origin. So let's start by making sure that our origin shows so that we have it when we need it. And now we can go over here to, on this when we start a new assembly, the insert component dialog is opened because that's the first step in creating the assembly. So what we're going to do is just click here in the middle of the page on the left-hand side of the screen, click Browse, and find wherever you saved your center ball joint. That's the first thing we're going to put in. And I'm going to click. And now if your screen isn't giving you this little preview, click this little button right up here. See that makes the preview pane go away. You can now make it show so that you can see what you're putting in. Once you've got this center ball joint selected, click Open. And what we're going to do is we're going to put, you can see the origin of this part. Now, remember when we built this part, we actually centered something on that origin. That was the center of that part. And so the origin, where we place the origin when we build parts, it can be important when we later put these into assemblies, particularly if they're going to be our first part. So that's something to keep in mind as you are building things. You want to keep your design intent in the forefront so that you can place that origin appropriately. We're going to line those two up, and I'm going to hover for a minute, and you can see the origin inference. Um, indicator, that's the little net kind of layered up origins. 
has shown up. And once that shows up, I'm going to click OK. Now, over here on my property tree manager, you can see the little F in front of the part name. That F means that that part is fixed to the origin. All right, first step, I'm just zooming a little bit to give myself some more room. Because now what I'm going to do is go ahead and insert my first ball arm, sorry, ball joint arm. So I clicked on the insert components up here in my ribbon. That brought up my insert components again. I'm going to click browse and select my ball joint arm part. And I'm going to open that and I'm just going to put it up here above my center ball joint. Now what I want to do is I want to connect this open end here to this ball. And we do that using the mate command. So I'm going to mate the face of the arm to the face of the center ball joint. And I want a concentric mate. And I'm now going to click OK and click OK again. Now I can move this guy around a little bit. So I can click on him and drag him, say, to there. OK? It's a free drag. You can play with it. Um, set it up however you would like. You know, make it look however you want it to. And we're going to click OK. Now we're going to do this three more times. We're going to put an arm on this ball and that ball and that ball. So let's go ahead and do that. Insert components, browse, ball joint arm, click open, put it somewhere near your center ball joint where you put it really doesn't matter because now we're going to mate this face to that ball and say make sure it's concentric, say OK. Take a look at these settings over here real quick. Make sure that we've got concentric selected and click OK. Let's take a look at this main real quick. Yep, it is concentric, so we're in good shape. All right. So now let's do that one more time. Two more times. Insert, browse, ball joint arm, open, put him down here. We're going to mate this face to that face. Click OK. We want it concentric and say OK. Let's go ahead and move this guy kind of out of the way. Dragging in three dimensions is always interesting. There we go. All right, and we're going to do it one more time. Insert, browse, ball joint arm, open. Set him down. Let's go ahead and make the mate and watch what happens. So mate this face to that face. And you can see it kind of overlaps it. And you may be going, no, not like that. It's actually OK. We'll go ahead and make the mate. And now we can move. And we'll just grab the end of that guy and drag him out of the way over here. There we go. OK. And just that quickly, we've gotten our arms on. And I am actually all the way over to page 10-9. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. And I'm going to rearrange my arms a little bit. Because the next step is going to be to put T's on these. So let's just move this guy to kind of be close to that guy. And this one to kind of be closer to that one. Okay. And um, we can even lift this up a little and lift him up 
a little and him down and him down let's rotate now yeah, let's let's see okay good enough i'll say okay i'm just rotating my view a little bit there okay now we're going to insert a t joint and those are again available in eCompanion. So insert this component, browse, find your T joint solid part, SolidWorks part file, open it up, and just put it up here. Okay. Now we're going to mate this face to that face and say okay make sure it's concentric and say okay and now connect the other end this one to that one and you can see SolidWorks moves things around a little bit it's concentric and say okay and now we can move this guy to make him look you can see movements gotten a little harder so Go ahead and play with that a little bit if you'd like to. Sometimes changing your view makes it a little easier to drag the way you want it to be. All right. Now let's do that again. Insert another T-joint. And I'm just going to put it down here. I'm going to mate this space to that ball. And I'm going to mate this face to that ball. And move him around a little bit. There we go. And there we have our completed ball joint assembly. So let's take a look at the course schedule. Week six, I've asked you to do the gate assembly and the helidrone assembly. So the gate assembly starts on page 10-30. And um, I will make sure you've got any part files that you need in the doc sharing portion of eCompanion. Have a great day, and I will see you again soon.